Okay, so we got our piece cut that we're going to use to make our hex nut. It's going to go here. The first thing I'm going to do before I set this up and start machining it is I want to make a, a thread gauge. That's what this piece of material here is for. It's some two and a half inch, 1045. Looks like at one time it was going to be a pin that takes grease. But what I want to do is make a thread gauge because as I'm, as I'm boring and threading this piece here, I have nothing to check it with. And I want to make sure that it's threaded to fit good on this thread right here. So I'll start with this first to make a male thread and I'll, I'll measure that thread just like I did here. I'll be using my triangles and I'll make sure that this is on the same pitch as this one measures. So once I have this machined, this will be a good reference. And then once I'm boring and threading this one, I can use this to screw into and get a good fit on it. And then once I know that this, these two pieces mate, then this should screw onto that bar as well. All right, we're gonna start with our piece of material here that's gonna serve as our thread gauge. Take a finished cut here. Should be about 25 to 30 thousandths. We're going to finish this 2.245, by the way. Clean that shoulder up. So, what I may be using this for after we machine the nut is a fixture to hold it and face one side off true with the threads so that whenever the nut is screwed down onto the bar whenever it tightens up against the face of the clapper it's nice and flat all right we're right there where we need to be so what we'll do is we'll cut us a undercut through a thread relief and of course chamfer our corners there let's check our pitch we already got everything preset right here And we look pretty good right there. Around 370 RPM. I do dad style. Quick draw McGraw. You don't really have to do quick draw because I got an undercut there. Gotta make sure you disengage so you don't crash. to it. Alright, I'm going to get my triangles out and uh, go ahead and start checking the pitch. I want to measure this to make sure that we're the same as the threads that's on the, the bar. Alrighty, we want 2.524, 530, we're at 541 right now, so we still got a little ways to go. Looks like I undershot it by half a thousandths. <laughs> All right, we're gonna leave it just like that. We need to take a file, 
clean the oil off of it there. So to start off with our nut, we're gonna put it in our new six jaw here. And what I wanna do is face each side, get it nice and square. I'm not gonna do the boring and threading yet. Uh, what I wanna do is get it square, and then we're gonna go over to the shaper and start making it into a hex. So let's see if we can utilize this six jaw self-centering chuck to square it up without having to do any kind of indicating. Let's go ahead and get that side face there. I'm just trying to get it square to the, the chuck jaws and I'm going to see if I can just do this by feel and that felt pretty good but we'll uh, I can turn it on and look at the back face and, and I can tell if that thing is running out and as far as our thickness goes it's not really critical I just want to clean it up we'll take another 30 40 thousandths off of that let's Let's see what it looks like. Looks like it's running nice and square on this back side. I don't see any of this going on. Go ahead and paint this thing with some dicum. Then we're going to lay it out. What I'm going to do is lay out a center, punch the center, and then we're going to draw another circle on it, which will be the the diameter of the where the flats, like the uh, the distance across the flats. All right, our dicum's dry. I'm going to use a Sterrett centering head. We're going to find the center. I usually start with just a, a little light one there and then I visually look at it. And I think that looks like in the center. So we, we need to look up a little bit of information on, on our layout. And I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. This is not a a super accurate piece that needs to be made but we're going to get it very very close so going into my uh, engineer's black book right here there's a handy page right here on dimensions for different sizes and they have the hexagon which is what we're going to be machining six sides and this gives you your formulas for finding whatever you need you know you have your given of your diameter then you have a formula to figure out what your distance across the flats is how long the flats are and in your depth 
which in this book says C, which is going to be from this diameter in to where the flat is. And that's all stuff that I've got figured right there. So to figure the depth of the cut, it's going to be, let me pull my calculator out right here. So to figure the what we want our depth of cut to be, so that was going to be C. You're going to go the diameter, which is uh, 4. This is 4 inch diameter times 0 0.067 is 0.268. That's the depth that we're going to be taking once we touch off, okay? All right, and then... Distance across the flats, we get 3.464. So let's see what our formula is for that. Let me find where it was at it's right here. Somewhere. Our diameter, which is going to be equal to the distance of the flats right there, the, the distance across the flats. So we can figure that. That's the small d. And we're going to need to figure s. S is the length of the flat. So that's going to be two inches which is going to be equal to your radius right there and uh, to figure that see you can even put it says diameter which is going to be four times 0.5 so two all right so we want to find the distance across the flats so we're already we've got two times 1.7321 1.7321 equals 3.464 and that's the that's the diameter that we're going to scratch across there using our spring calipers and then once we do our cutting we should be able to see the cut touch that diameter all right so i've done my best to adjust these calipers to half of that diameter we're just lining it up by sight with the calipers there Looks like I might be about 10 thousandths off or so. No, there it is. It's right on it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish scribing a circle. That's just a witness line, really, is all it is. It's a visual uh, witness line. And hopefully, once we touch the tool off and take our cut it'll come down and meet the circle here here's our tool that we'll use for the cut I just freshened up the, the grind and then rehone the corner all right we got the we got the tool touched off I ran, I traversed the table across until I just seen it touch that chrome. And we went down our 268, so it should be the depth there. And 20,000 step over. What we'll do is we'll, we'll cut the first three flats by uh, rotating and lining up with a bevel protractor. And then what we'll do from there is flip it over onto the flat and then set our depth again and then cut the other three.
good. Our tool did good. All right. Just looking at our tangent marks there. Looks like we're lined up just like we need to be. So I'm using my steering double protractor set on 60 degrees. And this is going to be a little tricky, but I think we can manage. We're going to have this lined up with our bevel protractor blade. We got it down, we got it against it. Okay. I think that's going to work right there. I'm going to snug the vise up. Now that we got our first three angles cut on there, we can use that to set down in here. We got it all nice and clean. And lay it on those flats to finish out the last three. And what we'll have to do is reset the depth of the, the cutter since we dropped it down that amount is 264 I believe or 268 whatever it is I got wrote down over there 268 what we'll do is let's, uh, let's run the tool across it and see if it's touching or clearing or what It is touching it. Got one little tiny scratch there on the chrome. Perfect. I'm going to reset the collar to zero. Getting the backlash out of where I, where I back it out of there. Alright, and then there's our that's two, 50, 60. So far, all the corners are leaving just a touch of that chrome plating on. Perfect. It means I got it lined up on 60 degrees.
All right. Well, there's our there's our finished hex, and I'm I'm uh, kind of happy with it. I got to admit, I made one one stupid little mistake, and what it, what happened whenever I was feeding down after we cut our first three, and then I fed the tool down the same amount. I fed an extra ten thousandths that I I just wasn't thinking, and I fed ten thousandths extra. So if you remember our Distance across the flats was supposed to be 3.464. Pretty close. There it is. There's our there's our ten thousandths. So we got two flats that are right there on size, and then you got the other two that were cut a little bit too deep and I just didn't I didn't catch it in time and I just said doesn't matter but um, you know this is not a critical piece it's just a, a shop project we're making a nut but you know if this was something that I was doing for a production I'd have to redo it and make sure that it's right but I wasn't even worried about the the uh, rough cut right there but what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and recut it and just take Let's just say 10,000. So I'll just go ahead. I'll find the lowest uh, side. We'll touch it and uh, or just drop it down another 10,000 and make a uh, finishing cut across there. I think that's what we'll do. I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to bore you guys to death. And I got a lot of footage of that seeing how it was done. So I'll bring you back once I get this recut nice and square. All right. We got that cleaned up with a... Uh, Ten thousands cut all the way around, and I was having so much fun making that that I made a second one. <laughs> I was planning on making two nuts anyway because I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have at least two bars or some kind of variation of another insert that's going to go in that clapper that'll be retained to hold smaller boring bars. So, figure while I was set up doing everything, go ahead and cut another one and be done with it. So, there we go. Probably do a little bit additional filing there on the on the corners, but I'm, I like the way that looks right there. So next step, we're going to go to the lathe, chuck it up, and drill it, bore it, thread it. I was going to give another peek at this tool in case you couldn't see it good in the earlier segment there. The bevel protractor numbers. This is a number C359, and that's what I use. It's got a uh, precision vernier there that you can use to line it up on minutes and that's what I use to line up the the 60 degree angle right there <laughs> 